Shamsuddin crowded to her. The artist we're talking about today is Shamsuddin. This work is called Carcass of Beef and it was painted in oil on canvas in 1925. Its dimensions are 116.21 by 80.65 centimeters for the canvas alone and 147.32 by 113.3 centimeters for the outer frame. The current location of the work is at the Minneapolis Institute of Art in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is in Gallery Room G, 377, the Department of European Art. Shamsutin's painting currently hangs near the corner of a large white wall in a room with warm wood trim and wood slab flooring. The work is hung in the modern style of hanging side by side at eye level with approximately a meter between the works. Large seated nude by Matisse is placed on a plinth in between the two paintings and central in the room while it contorts its body away from the Soutin and Shield paintings in an act of apparent indifference. There is a medium-sized bench placed to the right of Soutin's work, which appears to be mostly in front of Shield's painting, but also in view of Henri Matisse's large bronze sculpture. To its right hangs Egon Shield's textured oil painting of a similar size. She was an Austrian expressionist painter working in the early 1900s. The subject of the painting is posed in a position to show a moment of artistic inspiration. The works complement each other well in their size, color palette, energy of breaststroke, posing, and mood. There is an interesting play between the two works as they both have limbs reaching up with energy and limbs spread downwards. There is a strange morbidity in the sameness of these two paintings. The neighboring paintings to the left are familiar in their palette and line. The strong primary colors tie in well with soutines, and the long horizontal lines mimic the splayed carcass. The application of colors thick and expressive, much like, much like soutines. The crucifixion, which was painted in the 1920s, points to Raoult's devout Catholic faith, which contrasts the almost crucified beef carcass and soutines' lack of faith in the Jewish religion he was brought up in. The Japanese bridge on the left was painted in 1923-25 to 25 by Monet. The colors are not from reality, but the impasto and expressive color reflect the glitter mood of the bridge. Soutine pulls colors in a somewhat like manner, intensifying the real. Artist Biography Shem Soutine was born in 1893 at an unknown date and died August 9, 1943 at 6 a.m. from surgery meant to help him with his stomach ulcers, but due to internal bleeding from gastric perforation, he did not make it through the operation. Soutine was born the 10th child of a family of 11 in Smilovici near Minsk, Russia, which is now considered Belarus. Many European Jews settled there in small communities where they practiced an ascetic Orthodox lifestyle in towns known as shtetls. Here, Shem grew up poor, hungry, and frequently beaten for any creativity or art making he attempted because it was against the strict Orthodox religious commandments. Shem would hide in the nearby forest most days and nights only to return when he was incredibly hungry. This would grow into serious stomach problems in the future. Following a near-death beating for drawing, Soutin traveled to Minsk, where he studied under the town's only drawing teacher, who convinced his family to support his art career. He then traveled to Vilnius, where he studied at the Academy of Fine Arts, and then to Paris, where his art journey blossomed. Soutin was reclusive, quiet, and disheveled. He made a handful of friends, including the artists Amadeo Modigliani, Pablo Picasso, and Oscar Mistan Cheninov. Modigliani was also Jewish, who was a close friend of his, and this portrait of Soutine painted by him shows the care he had for Soutine, as he usually left the eyes in his portraits empty. He even set Soutine up with his first art dealer, Leopold Zabrowski. In 1913, Soutine enrolled at the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris, where he studied until he grew bored and unchallenged. Subsequently, he continued painting and had a few relationships with women who helped with his dwindling health. In 1925, Deborah Melnick gave birth to their child, Aimé, who Soutine did not acknowledge. With the onset of World War II, Soutine was permanently assigned to live in Sivri in 1941. He was wanted by the Gestapo in Paris and Lyon, as well as the Vichy regime police. All of his art was to be confiscated and sent to Berlin immediately. Due to the police constantly searching for him, he was always on the move, which weighed on his health. He finished his last paintings while living with Mary Brath near champigny sur vieux and died at 50 years old. Soutine is commonly referred to as the last cursed painter due to his harsh upbringing, illness, poverty, melancholy, and premature death. History of the object. This photo is from his studio on St. Goddard Street, where he painted carcass of beef as well as his other beef paintings. Nicknamed the slaughterhouse of Soutine, here he strung up the carcasses and poured blood, formaldehyde, and ammonia on them to keep them fresh while he painted. These practices are very against his orthodox Jewish upbringing, and it would appear that Soutine was attempting to heal childhood trauma through these paintings. It is unknown who initially purchased the work. Eventually, it was gifted to the Mia by Mr. and Mrs. Donald Winston, an anonymous donor sometime before 1967. Rembrandt von Rijn was a major inspiration for Sham Soutine. Looking at these two works side by side really shows how Soutine took pieces from Rembrandt's work and reworked them, illustrating his own melancholy. Formal qualities and content. Here we have three paintings by Soutine, two of beef and one of a chicken. 
They all share a violent, visceral pain and a vast array of vibrant, fleshy colors. Here's a quote by Shem. I wanted to scream, but he looked so joyful that the cry stayed in my throat. I always feel this cry there. When I painted the beef carcass, it was still this cry that I wanted to release. I didn't succeed. Formally, it has a dynamic, aggressive, yet organic line, and the directionality is frenzied and expressive. The shapes slightly simplify the somewhat three-dimensional form. The texture is jagged with layers of impasto oil paint, creating a surface that further embodies the fleshiness or viscera. The color is poignant and bodily with cadmium reds, oranges, and yellows. The blue, bold blues in the background pull the strung-up carcass into the foreground and give the space a cold, lonely feeling. Contextually, this work, along with others, serves as a precursor for action painting and abstract expressionism. There, this is a still life, and although many will categorize it as expressionist, Soutine was not part of a particular style. He was a life painter and a realist. His childhood food scarcity, pain, and love for Rembrandt have majorly influenced the work in a way this carcass is an object of desire for him. <laughs>